These two videos because I've, I've finished explaining the user interface and a lot of the core functionality, um, but eh, there will be more as we play along, but let's get started. We need to set our own priority a little bit higher, at least while we have a limited number of spies. Let's get our um, national unity and ruling party support maxed out. And we're basically done with that. We can see that we're producing a limited number of spies with our available leadership. I'm gonna go up to three times speed. Um, any faster than that, there's certain occasions where I'll go four times speed. Five times speed, you can't really control things. It's just uh, things are happening too fast. Here's our national focus for the year. Um, it's going to be... We'll improve our abilities in the chosen area. There are three tiers which will each take 90, 360, 720 days to reach respectively. The focus can be changed at any time, either by using the utility, um, which I didn't explain. Wait the decision. Um, we're going to do general economy for the first year. Uh, engine type, aircraft protection, protection level, and tank armor. Uh, we get to make decisions about like kind of the focus of types of fighting vehicles. So we're gonna go with diesel because Germany focused on diesel engines in World War II. Um, cast or welded armor. Uh, Germany made both, but definitely more welded than cast. If we were playing Japan, it would be cast. Uh, let's go with. Welded armor, heavy aircraft. So we get a little bit of extra build, build time, but we gain air organization, movement speed, heart attack, and air intercept efficiency. Uh, ship focus, so we're playing Germany, so we're gonna go with Krupp cemented steel. So that would be, so the annoying thing is there's descriptions here and then these don't match exactly. So it's not Vickers. It's not special treatment steel because that'd be the United States. So it's going to be cemented armor, and we get to choose between open and closed hangars. And for Germany, we're not making carriers, at least not until 1945 or so, in which case our practical is not going to be very good. But at the very least, we're going to go with closed hangars. Got some IC freed up. Let's get some. Um, Let's see. We're going to need transport planes later. That's uh, the same practical as medium bombers, so we can get that from producing this. We're not going to focus on any heavies. And then fighter practical gives us close air support so I'm not going to do that there's a way in the base game to produce some um, factories that you can then assign separately later but I think in button black ice we have to build factories on a per province level so we're gonna add some factories uh, producing too many factories later is just draining your IC but if we do it early we're getting benefits across the rest of the game. So I'm going to build up some factories. Uh, let's see. Some of our major production centers. Going to build a... Uh, we'll, we'll have time to build oil rigs later. Let's just get some industry going.
And we can change the priority of these builds. Um, if we decide that we're spending too much time on factories, we can we can put more of it into um, units. So not a big deal. Over committing on this. Uh, we'll do five on in Wilhelmshaven. We'll do five in Hamburg. We'll do five in Kiel. And I think that's well, and one more in Stetton. I think that's probably good. A lot of orders. It'd be less expensive to build if we do an initial order of industry. If I press play, we'll see what we're actually capable of building right now. These stats update themselves on, on midnight of each day change. So you can see uh, we're not actually able to start these orders quite yet. So here's our Baltic Navy. I need to turn off upgrading here because I really don't want to waste IC on that. I didn't go into um, really looking too much at our pocket battleships, but these are the core of our navy right now. Um, Graf Spee, Admiral Scheer, and Deutschland, which we'll later rename to Lutzo because it was brought up, I guess, at some point in early World War II that if Germany had the Deutschland sink, that wouldn't be a very good uh, omen for the whole country. I think that's kind of ironic, but they changed the name to Lutzo. So we have three pocket battleships. These are basically heavy, heavy cruisers in a way with 11 inch guns. So guns that are sort of between battleship and heavy cruiser caliber. It's a kind of interesting concept um, that definitely works in the absence of any air power. But if the enemy, like, like to say the, the UK, um, closes the Mid-Atlantic Gap with bombers or is able to track one of these down with, you know, carrier air groups, uh, they don't stand a chance. So they're kind of a, a they're kind of a um, legacy of a really old-fashioned way of thinking about convoy rating. So our first 10 infantry divisions that come out, we're going to be using to build up our uh, Western Army Group. And, and all they'll basically be doing is covering the border with uh, Belgium and France. We're going to have to build um, at least another 50 or so infantry divisions before we go to war with Poland. So I want to about have about 60 infantry divisions and at least, at least 5, if not 10, panzer divisions by the time we um, declare war. World War II starts, that kind of thing. Some aberrations like this, where suddenly the game will say that you have 134 available IC. That's that's a lie. Um, that has to do this number when there's uh, events that pop up. So we can just ignore that. Uh, it really just matters, like on the on the day change at midnight where we're at. We can just check that at that point. I don't think any decisions fired, but there's probably a reason. I'm going to go up to four speed. All right, you can see a bunch of the decisions that we um, initiated at the start of the game have been implemented and these are just sort of notification panels about factories and shipyards that we've builded and built and you can sort of imagine some of this is sort of RP like these were orders that were initiated before the game started and now they're they're available there's no one button to close all these windows it's a, definitely a weak point in the game you have to micro a lot of windows Okay, our orders have sort of figured themselves out, so we've actually started our factory production in Berlin and Dresden. So right now our um, 
Nazi Party is at 36% popularity. Um, we are modifying our ruling party support, so we can check that again in a bit and see if that value changes. Uh, let's check out our national leaders. Uh, so we can modify this. So right now, uh, Hitler is our head of state. Rudolf Hess is our head of government. Uh, he's sort of the head of the Nazi party organizationally, and then Hitler's the uh, head of state. Um, he gives us a pretty great 5% industrial capacity bonus, um, which I'm not going to change right now. Let's check foreign affairs. I don't think we can do much better. Oh, we can. So Ludwig Castle gives us a 5% leadership modifier, so that's really good. Um, Minister of National Defense. So this guy's kind of in... I don't know what's, what his deal is, but he's he's losing his 5% IC. Um, maybe because he's advocating for things that are inefficient. We can think about it that way. Um, let's replace him with something that's not so problematic. So this guy, Hallmar Schacht, Schacht, yeah, can't pronounce German. Um, he loses us 5% money, which is a much lesser deal than losing 5% IC, but he gives us 5% IC efficiency for production, which is just huge. Um, so we'll go with him. Uh, Minister of the Interior, This you can sort of think about this guy as like the head of police. Um, he increases monthly war exhaustion. Uh, we're not at war right now, so it's not a big deal. Um, he does increase the consumer good cost during peacetime, which is what we're at right now. And I think we can do better. So let's check. Goebbels does a lot of the same things, although he's doing the converse from war exhaustion. So that's that could be helpful later in the game. But he reduces land organization by 10%. Um, so all of our land units will have 10% less organization by default. Um, that doesn't seem great to me. Um, this Either this Carl Sack or this Franz Gunther guys, that they, they have leadership benefits and there's no downsides. So we're gonna we're gonna put in Carl Sack, uh, Minister of Science. Uh, we're getting again we're getting leadership benefit, but this guy is reducing our money supply by 25 percent. So let's see if we can do better than that. Um, let's see. So William Messerschmitt gives us aircraft practical decay. So basically, he's reducing the amount of decay that we get for light aircraft by five percent per month. Uh, but we lose the leadership modifier. This guy gives us research efficiency, but we're still losing a bunch of money and we're losing rare materials. Uh, I'm going to go with William Messerschmitt. Um, head of intelligence. <laughs> we can actually have Hallmar in two different jobs at once. That doesn't make much sense. But we're getting two IC and efficiency pr production and industrial intel, and we're losing money. I think that, in this case, is worth it. So I'm going to go and put him in that job, too. And then Chief of the Army, um, this one's, the decisions are harder here. So combat movement speed by 20% is significant. So if we're having issues with like terrain and weather and supply problems, uh, this movement speed bonus is stacked on top of that. So that can offset some pretty significant movement issues. Um, reinforced chance is always good and armor practical delay. That's pretty, pretty significant. Um, we can put Hitler as chief of the army. We're not going to do that in 1936, but there will be, like, let's say we're losing really badly and the Russians are sort of pushing into Germany. 5% uh, territorial pride is huge. And that's a bonus for defending your own, your own territory, basically. So when we're invading the Soviet Union, we're going to be fighting against territorial pride the whole time. That's a, that's a, it adds up. It's a significant bonus to the defender. Uh, Ludendorff is a World War One general. I'm not interested in having him in command. Um, I guess we'll leave Warner Fish as uh, or Fresh as head as, as head of the army. And then Navy. Uh, these are usually a little bit more vanilla. There's not a whole lot of differences between them, so we'll leave Eric in charge. Uh, I don't believe there's any national decisions we can fire. 
actually there is, so I misspoke. So we can go from full mobilization, which is what we're at right now, to war economy, um, but we're not at war, and I don't want to gain war exhaustion earlier than necessary, so we would get an extra 15% IC, um, but we're going to get all these negatives, so we'll wait to switch to this until 1939. Got some, uh, we've automated trade, remember, so we're going to see the AI start creating exports and imports, and and um, I'm mostly okay with that. You can definitely do better if you micro it. It's just not a part of the game that I'm very interested in. So, so you can see the AI just gave the Soviet Union 46 money per month, which is a lot, but we're getting 41 uh, crude oil, or no fuel. Sorry, not crude. Cr uh, the crude symbol would be would be this one. So this is already refined. I think that's a pretty good deal. Uh, we have to just keep track of our money supply here. So we're spending a bunch of money to get that fuel, but we're gaining money from Italy for rare materials, and we're getting money from Poland for sending them supplies. And we have plenty of supplies, and we can always produce more supplies. Supplies are a pretty easy way to make money because you can sort of overdo this slider right here um, and produce more than you need and then sell them. So you can tell it's a national decision thing. So you can see we need only seven consumer goods, but we're at 147. And that's the way that the AI, uh, in this case, upgrade slider manages dealing with reducing descent. So some kind of event fired that caused a little bit of dissent, and the way the AI deals with that is they, it bumps up the consumer goods for a day to just a ridiculous level, and you can see it's now backed down to normal again. Usually the first couple days in January, there's a lot of little things that happened like that uh, in 1936, and we don't have to worry about that being the case uh, forever. Uh, we have a, plenty of available transports. We're not going to get in anywhere close to using all these for trade. Um, when the war starts, we're going to have to manually control this. Otherwise, the uh, AI will send out these convoy ships. Um, regardless of, of the war status, and the UK will sink them all, so we got to take care of that. Okay, so let's look at these Luftwaffe flak units real quick. So these are the units that, is, that spawned um, when we created our Air Force organizational thing. So we got a bunch of flak regiments, and they're each uh, composed of two brigades, one of which is a headquarters defense detachment, and you can sort of think of this just as a, a bureaucratic group of people. Uh, they're not really defending much. They have a defense value, and we can see that they have a defensiveness and a toughness. But this brigade is mostly a role-playing thing, um, in my opinion, it's not really an infantry brigade in, in a pure sense. It, it'll it'll shatter immediately if it gets attacked by a a Russian um, combat division. Uh, but it will stand up to um, partisans, so there is some value to this. Uh, and then we get an anti-aircraft uh, flak. It says regiment, but this is more of a uh, of a attachment. It's only 380 men, and however many guns that would be, probably no more than 10 or 20 um, and right now it's 37 millimeter flak uh, it depends on the unit we click on but you'll see that we do have some regiments of heavy anti-aircraft gun and right now uh, this is a little ahistorical because this actual loadout of the 20 millimeter flak 30 is a late war design but you'll see as our technology upgrades that this will switch to uh, flak 37 which is more uh, period accurate so let's do a quick movement tutorial, and this applies to all units. So um, certain units like this, even if they don't have a transport element, like there's no horse-drawn wagons here, they can still move. And we can tell because they have a 5 kilometer per hour symbol here. This is their max movement speed, not accounting for weather or other movement detractors. And we can see right now that um, our terrain is perfect for movement. It's plains and urban. Weather is... Um, 
clear sky. It's freezing, uh, but there's no wind and there's no overcast or precipitation or mud. And the ground is not frozen. Um, so we're able to move at full speed. So this regiment, Flak Regiment 9, I can move to Dortmund to defend Dortmund from air attack. Um, but if I click on the theater command, we can see that it's one kilometers per hour. And that's partly because this heavy AA regiment and political leader and all these other things are in this in this quote unquote division, even though it's not really a division. Divisions move at the least common denominator. So our headquarters can move at one kilometer per hour. And that means that this whole unit, even if other units within it can move faster, it's still only going to move at one kilometer per hour. And we need to take that into account when we de design divisions, because if we put in like siege artillery into a motorized unit, it's not going to move at all. So that's how the game uh, manages that. We'll just put both of these in Dortmund now. And you can see uh, one way to move divisions is just to click, and that's a normal move. Divisions can be put on trains, and that's called strategic movement. And the way to do that is rather than just right-clicking, I hold down Control, and then I right-click, and then you can see that it says strategic redeployment. So that division is now being put on trains, and we'll move to Dusseldorf when in when the movement is done. Strategic movement is much faster than normal movement, uh, but you're vulnerable to being attacked while on, on strategic deployment, and that has significant organizational um, downsides. And then there's also some combat modifiers that will be unavailable for a set amount of time as your division gets off the train, sort of is, is in sort of an ambush state. So you don't want to get caught by an enemy unit while you're strategically redeploying. So we'll actually move these guys to Dusseldorf, and then these guys can stay in Dortmund. I don't think I need to do any other movements. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys how that works. As we deploy divisions, I'll, I'll go into movement more. So we got some more trade uh, trade opened up. Uh, for whatever reason, the Soviet Union canceled the fuel order. Maybe they decided it wasn't advantageous, and we now have a, uh, a rare materials import from them. Uh, one of the reasons I let the AI do it is it does a decent job, at least up until war is declared, and then it's debatable. But it does a better job than I think I can do at managing my cash flow. So it's not going to create trades that are going to cause a significant negative change in our cash flow. It'll put it down to maybe where we're not gaining any any gold, but we're not going to be losing significant amounts. You can see our orders are progressing here. This green bar shows us our um, completion ratio for that individual order. You can see what happens if I go up to five speed. The clock moves almost a little bit too fast for my taste, and then these you know de decisions pop up really quick, and it's hard to manage them. All right, so we got a bunch of decisions here. Um, we need to prepare our, our yearly budget. It's sort of an RP thing. Um, we're given a decision uh, that allows us to. It's not going to do it for us, but it allows us to build fascist militia brigades, and these are not strong units, but it, they're very cheap to build. They have a um, inherent um, suppression value, so we can use them to suppress partisans. And uh, they they can't stand in an, in an open field against the Soviet division, but if we have a, a, a significant number of these, let's say with attached anti-tank, and we put them in an urban area, their urban defense modifier is relatively high for how cheap they are. So they can be useful in, in specific circumstances. So I want to activate that unit. Uh, this is a big one, so it's going to give us two options. One is it's going to allow um, unique Wehrmacht units, and it's not going to build the units for us. It's basically going to give us a role-playing uh, headquarters with that with that historic unit logo. Um, but 
I'm doing a, a historical buildup, so I'm going to ignore this. Uh, it's asking us, do we want an easy strategic resource experience? Normal means that we will get bonuses and detractors from owning or missing strategic resources. I think this is a pretty important part of the game. Easy means that if we're missing resources, we're not going to get any um, detractors, but we'll still receive bonuses. I think this is a real component of the game, and it incentivizes us to try to capture strategic resources, so I want that in the game. Uh, we're getting a bonus from Willie Messerschmidt being our um, Minister of Science. That's great. Uh, research progress towards air engines and twin engines. Uh, research practical and also jet engines so even though we haven't started jet engines we're getting practical for it and that's huge um, government secretary focus i usually ignore this um, it's sort of a, a random chance to get a benefit and we can see if i click on this we could get a benefit of a decrease in unit recruit time um, but the ch there's also a chance that we could get a negative effect and i usually just um, ignore this. I'm not going to say never because then we'll never get this op option again. I'll just say not now. These decisions basically implement the decisions we made about our support brigades, and although we don't have any currently. There's no downsides to saying yes. It's just confirming that that's how those divisions would be built, or those regiments. Artillery specialization, um, I believe this is for mixed support brigades. The only reason I can think of that we'll build those is for light infantry divisions, that we want to be really quick and mobile and not have, you know, the max seven brigades. They might have five. Um, and I want those divisions to be able to move over mountains pretty well, so pack artillery. And then we get to choose the anti-tank focus for our motorized support brigades. I'm interested in tank destroyer focus. Personality effects. Um, this is an RP thing. It basically means regardless of the decisions that we make, if certain events occur, um, Hitler will get angry or or be ecstatic like after the fall of France. Um, and that'll produce both positive and negative effects, and I'm not interested in this because I want to make our own decisions about this sort of ahistorical play for, playthrough that we're about to do. So I'll say no. And then this is a uh, decision about our rocket test facility at, at Pinamunda, which is um, up here. And I do want this facility because it makes it pretty big. Right now, it's a, it's a, you can see it's a, we lose a lot of resources and manpower, but we'll gain a bunch of um, industrial practical for building rockets for um, V1 and V2 later. So I want this for sure. We also have a zinc surplus. So let's talk about strategic resources real quick. Um, let's go into resource map mode. Uh, we can see that we have following strategic resources, they're in blue, and there's two ways we can see this. One is on the map. We have zinc in uh, Nordhausen. You can see right here that we have a 3 out of 10 uh, zinc mine. These cannot be modified as far as I know. So this is a 3 out of, the, out of a max of 10 uh, richness of the mine. And then we have a um, horses, so this is like, you know, uh, both cavalry and, and pack horses breeding uh, province in Oldenburg, and that gives us certain effects, and we'll look at those in a second. So we can see we can see those on the map about like where they're located. And then if I go into production, I can see those same strategic resources up here. So there's, there's our zinc. There's our horses. We also have pharmaceutical industry in Frankfurt which we can see here in that pill symbol. Uh, we have ball bearings in Schwein, Schwein, uh, Schweinfurt. Um, and that gives an effect too for our production ability. It doesn't really say what it is here, but it'll tell you over time if you lose them or gain them what benefit you're going to get from it. Military Academy in Potsdam, which is just south of Berlin. That's, that's 
historically accurate. There's a military academy here, or at least there was. Um, and then National Monument in Berlin. You can see the uh, the blue cross-hatching with the green shows that this province has both uh, a strategic resource and um, a some kind of civilian or a resource resource. In this case, it's a, a research center. Um, research centers are buildings that are sort of spawned in the beginning of the game, and that is... Uh, just a, a, a flat benefit to our, our research rate. Okay, lots of decisions in 1936. Um, so we can reclassify our armored ships, Panzerschiff. Um, they're pocket battleships in the English terminology. Um, we can reclassify them as heavy cruisers, um, which is effectively meaning that we're going to just build them as heavy cruisers, or we can keep building them as they are, and I'm not going to... really focus on this too much. Uh, let's see. There's not really any effect of doing either. I'm not going to build more of those, so let's reclassify them as heavy cruisers. Uh, Winter Olympics 1936. This is, I think this is a historical poster. Um, we'll lose a bunch of supplies, but we'll gain some other benefits as soon as the Olympics start. Uh, we can build the Berghof, which is uh, Hitler's um, mansion, basically, in the Alps. Um, we lose 5% IC until March, which is basically a month, but we gain an airbase, we gain 10 anti-aircraft guns, we gain a radar station, and we gain a 10 fortress, which makes this territory extremely defensible. I mean, if we're having to defend this, that means the war is over. <laughs> so it's up to us to decide. If we don't build it, we lose some land organization for a month. I generally think it's worth it, at least for the radar station. We're having a shortage of tungsten. We have a shortage of rubber. We have a shortage of nickel, molybdenum, manganese copper, chromite, aluminum, and because of all those missing components of rare materials, we're building Navy ships, which we're not currently building. Well, actually, we are building submarines, but we're building them 5% slower than we could be if we had some of these missing components here. So one way to solve that is to buy um, these resources on the open market, but you can only do that through decisions, and we don't have any decisions right now to to order any of these supplies. So we have to check our um, diplomacy tab from time to time to see if we're able to buy any of those. Um, certain of those resources will be available to us um, when we capture uh, countries. So like Austria, we'll, we won't be gaining anything significant. We'll be gaining a little bit of fuel. Um, Czech Republic will gain uranium, uh, which is obviously required for nuclear weapons. That's pretty important. We'll also gain um, some civilian strategic resources, like there will be an automobile production factory in, in, um, somewhere in here. I think it might be in Brno. I'll we'll have to check. Um, Poland's the same. We'll get more zinc, which we don't really need more of, but we'll have a lot at that point. Um, France, I think we get aluminum, so that's that's pretty important. Yugoslavia gives us chromite, which is very important for metal production. More aluminum in Greece. We'll get certain strategic resources like petroleum refinery when we bring Romania into the Axis, so we'll get that. Um, a lot of the really big stuff, like fuel and um, and manganese, we're not going to be able to get until we invade the Soviet Union. I'm just checking around here. Um, we're not going to have a good source of tungsten for most of the game unless we're able to bring Portugal into the fold. That's a big one. Tungsten is used for um, for anti-tank uh, 
ammunition and, and other kinds of piercing shot and uh, certain armor production and um, and factory fabrication devices like um, like lathes and things like that can be produced out of tungsten. Uh, when we capture Norway, we'll gain a um, a uh, heavy water facility, which will be huge for our nuclear weapons program. And then Finland will give us fur, which helps with, with um, attrition during winter. I think that's kind of it. Uh, Turkey has chromite. We're not going to be trading with them right off the bat, I don't think. And Italy's not going to give us anything super helpful. So, I mean, we're going to be strategic resource limited no matter what. So here's the option um, to start the uh, SS tree. So we can say that, oh, we don't want SS in my game because uh, they perpetrated the Holocaust, and that's totally fair. You can decide to not have SS in the game. Um, we can do historical division upgrades, which means basically that the game will provide us the, the headquarters units again when, when those divisions were activated, but we'll have to build the cores of those divisions ourselves, uh, or we can just do it entirely ourselves, and I usually like to do it that way, so let's do, um, sorry, I got that reversed, historical division upgrades versus a historical full divisions. I don't want the game to give us full divisions. I want to do it um, our, our way. Uh, budget reserves it means we have extra money, which is always good. Battle commanders are a regiment type for like a famous commander like Guderian or Mainstein, and we can use those in really specific circumstances to provide some pretty big battle bonuses. Um, like for a given battle occurring in a given province, and I think that can be helpful. We'll get into that more later. Great news. Uh, Sharnhorst and, and Nizenau. Um, so these ships aren't produced yet. Um, we actually are deciding in this moment to either put them into the shipyard or not. And um, we're not going to be building battleships. And the reason for that is the IC cost is massive. Um, I also don't really want to build these even in the sense of like not having the practical because I don't think they're going to be super useful. I mean, again, we'll use them in the Baltic, sure, but I'd rather produce cheaper, uh, just heavy cruisers. So I'm going to say no need. Um, next for support recon, yep, okay. So we're going to probably scrap these coastal battleships, and I'm going to be okay with the majority of our Navy being either pocket battleships or uh, Prince Eugen heavy cruisers. We're not gonna, I don't think we're gonna research too much of that tree beyond maybe 1940 um, before the, I think the returns become kind of diminishing and it's not worth using research points on. Uh, Germany basically wins or dies um, with air and ground units more than Navy. Um, submarines are gonna make a strategic difference, but I, I don't, I've never seen subs alone in this game be able to defeat the United Kingdom purely through uh, strategic warfare, um, disruption of national unity. I think it's almost impossible to just do that by itself. Our supplies are pretty low. I think we're trading a bunch of them away. Uh, but this value shifts around a lot, so I wouldn't draw too much from that. Um, so similar to our similar to our Schleswig Holstein and Schlesen um, Braunschweig pre dreadnoughts, we can actually we had technically have more of them. Hanover, um, it's currently decommissioned and in disrepair. We can either recommission her or break her up for scrap. I think the Having a coastal battleship is, I mean, it's 51 in sea attack. As old as it is and slow as it is, that's a lot of, of, of sea attack. I'm going to just go ahead and commission the Hanover. I actually changed my mind about 
that. And the other reason that's helpful is for every coastal battleship that we spawn, we get a World War One era torpedo boat and a passenger ship. And that's actually huge, because now we don't need to spend IC building a fleet of these to move our troops in the Baltic. So we'll just merge these all, turn off upgrades, and move on. Do we want revolts? Um, no, I don't. Uh, let's see. Do you want to disable Soviet partisan uprisings? Um, so this isn't, I mean, it's the same term um, as the game difficulty. I think what this is basically saying is we want no uprisings because we just don't want to deal with that for expediency and, and ease of play, um, or we do want them. And I think it's really... You're, you're, you're missing out on the experience of the Eastern Front if you're just ignoring partisans. I think they're a pretty important part of the game mechanics. So we're going to say yes, uh, and we'll just have to remember that we need to have units behind the front line to deal with partisans. We can export our some of our extra zinc for money. I absolutely want to do that. Yeah, we're pretty low on supplies here. I Let's see supplies. We can't improve our supply production until 1938 from a technology level. I'm not too worried about this unless it drops to zero. And I don't think it's going to. We'll we'll see. Yeah, we're importing a lot of fuel from Romania, um, and that's not cheap, but our cash flow is still positive. Speed up the clock a little bit. Can always pause it. Okay, uh, we get the same option with Hessen. I'm going to say yeah. So we actually are negative supplies temporarily. The game will we'll balance that out. Let's move Hessen over, turn off upgrades. Merge these fleets. So we have a, a, a core kind of World War One era battleship flotilla of four coastal battleships. Um, these are again very slow, uh, but you know, 14 inch, 13 inch guns are still are still 13 inch guns. So these will come in handy for shore bombardment. Um, these torpedo boats actually we can upgrade relatively easily. Uh, one thing to note is we gain practical with initial construction. I don't think we gain practical with upgrading. So if I were to send these back to the shipyard, I don't think I would get practical for upgrading them, but at the same time, I think it's very cheap to upgrade them. Um, the main reason we, we did this is to get these. Those are pretty huge. Let's, um, do we have any existing destroyers? Yeah, and these are much, I mean, they're, they're early 30s air variants, but they're still much better than those World War I destroyers. Yeah, we'll just wait. We'll have time to upgrade those. Yeah, we're gonna go to 5x speed because I want to at least deploy our um, initial divisions in this in this episode before we we move on. You can see if I go at five speed, you know things are moving more what you'd expect for a, for a, a game rather than a full-on simulation. Uh, so we're getting this tank destroyer upgrade that we decided on for motorized support. That's great. Right now we don't need it, but it'll come in handy later. Um, the 1936 Olympics just started. Let the games begin. So we're gaining all these increases in relations with these countries, but we lose supplies. So we're, again, we're negative. 
uh, engineers, artillery focus, pack focus. We wanted that. Uh, China German cooperation. Um, China wants to modernize. Basically, do we want to sell it some some stuff? And I think that's fine. Agree to continue. Japan doesn't like it in the short term, but we'll figure that out later. Uh, right now, we have low popularity. That's modified by um, both national unity and also international decisions that we're making. And early on in the game, I, I don't worry about this too much. As long as we're producing enough consumer goods, we should be all right. Oh, let's check uh, politics. So, you know, despite supporting the ruling party, uh, we're seeing a slight decrease in popularity of the National Socialist Party, and I think that's partly because of decisions that have fired. You can see it says internal factors minus 3.8, um, whereas some of the liberal parties are gaining popularity. But for a totalitarian state, I mean, it's interesting to look at, but it's not, um, it doesn't matter in a practical sense, because they're not going to be allowed to run in elections. We're going to get a lot of these sort of trade decision um, tags here. Uh, I'm not going to really worry about those and just click through them. The AI is taking care of that for us. You can see we got a lot of trade routes uh, open right now. Normal conscription, we don't want it to be expedited. Uh, we're getting our first technologies out. Great, so we got machine guns advance and twin engine bomber bay advance. So as research goes through, we're now getting a inefficient research um, notification. So if we go to mach uh, machine gun focus under armament, we can see that it's inefficient because we're now researching a 1938 technology while it's still 1936. So we're going to click that off. Same thing for Twin Engine Bomber Bay, which is under bomb load. And we can start those again in 1938. For certain technologies, it's okay to start like a year early if they're like really impactful. Uh, like this one, dual purpose AA guns, I might start that in 1939. Um, maybe like medium armor designs, that kind of stuff, because you just really want to get that out the door as fast as possible. But uh, other than that, I usually wait. So remember, we chose economy this year, so we're gaining bon uh, bonuses from that already. Um, one of three, so the first of three bonuses is 10% IC, IC efficiency, and supplies. So that's uh, that's pretty significant. We're up to 183 now. And that's before we even get any of our, our factories out of production, which won't be out of production until the end of the year, and that's all right. Okay, so Olympics events, um, dance show, great. Uh, closing ceremony, so the Olympics are over. Gain money, manpower, we lose threat, and we gain mountain warfare equipment and Arctic warfare equipment. That's helpful. We gain a heavy industry, um, which is basically like a heavy factory in um, Kiel. And heavy factories, um, right here you can see that we can't choose to build those. Uh, the U.S. can, right off the bat. Um, Germany gets them through uh, events like this. And we can see now that Kiel, now Kiel has one. And all I believe that this is is, is a, you know one point in heavy industry is probably more than one or two in a regular industry sense. It's just an extra layer of, of, uh, of detail. Uh, Reich's Colonial Bund, um, this is sort of a, a group that is advocating for the return of our colonies that we lost in World War I. Um, Tanzania, Namibia, and so on. Um, I don't care about overseas colonies. I am interested in dominating Europe, so I'll just say, bah, we have no need for distant lands. And besides, if we dominate Europe, it's not a whole lot of a stretch to go down to Africa and take that too, so it doesn't really matter. You can see our economy is kicking into high drive. We're almost at 200 IC now with uh, Pretty much just through decisions, not anything else. 
uh, railway artillery designs. Um, we do want at least a few of these for Leningrad, um, and I'll go more into siege warfare when we start the war. Um, but, you know, individual units, if I click on this flak regiment, we can see that there's modifiers to where, what kind of terrain it fights in. So this AA unit, or whatever it's comp part of, will impart the division that it's part of these bonuses. So 40% river defense, but crossing a river is a negative 22 detractor, and movements detractors, and then plane defense is an increase, and every every regiment type has bonuses and, and negatives. Railway artillery, I can tell you right now, for urban attack is like plus like a few hundred percent, so it makes a huge difference for railway um, artillery if we're going to be planning on sieging Moscow or Leningrad, but again, we only need a few of them, so... Um, we're going to start the program. If we don't start the program, we're not going to get um, events that will fire to spawn railway artillery. So start the program. Uh, we can get components of bonuses like that by producing heavy artillery, uh, but it's much less than siege artillery. Let's just look at our... Uh, right now our standard um, unit level our, uh, howitzer is a World War One era uh, 7.5 centimeter design. Um, medium artillery is the same, except it's semi-motorized. Um, heavy artillery is a 15 centimeter cannon from 1916. So we'll we'll be already upgrading that as soon as this one comes out, and we'll check again um, what designs we get in 1936. Our infantry branch upgrade. Uh, so now our infantry divisions are slightly more advanced. We can click on re infantry regiment, and we can see that. We shifted from an old-fashioned Car 98 to a uh, early variant of a semi-automatic rifle. Um, the game just calls it Grenadier 36. This is partly um, RP because I I know in reality uh, the Germans kept on using the Car 98K until the end of the war. So get all the these you know bonuses for all these different kinds of infantry regiments. So this is a huge technology. Controllable propeller pitch just increases the um, speed and fuel consumption, uh, or decreases the fuel consumption of our uh, fighters. Special Forces branch upgrade, so that affects uh, mountain infantry and uh, marines and um, commandos. Commandos are another um, kind of brigade that have huge bonuses to urban attack. And right now we can't make them, but when we produce them, I'll, I'll show you guys um, what that looks like. Same for artillery, so let's just go look at our artillery brigades real quick, our regiments. I'm gonna probably use those words interchangeably and that's not accurate, but uh, just Pardon me there, anyway. Um, I didn't show us our pack artillery. It's it's sort of a, a man portable or mule portable uh, light howitzer. So our heavy cannon didn't upgrade, but our um, standard infantry level field gun is now a, a more modern 7.5 centimeter uh, semi-portable howitzer. So uh, we had that Pina Munde decision, um, which is, I believe, here. And we can see that it put it into tree, into the build tree. And it's basically built, so I'll just move this to the top. It says 23 industrial capacity, but you can see it's basically already built. If I start the clock, that should auto-complete at midnight. There we go. So, oh, I was pointing at the wrong place. So it's actually here. Um, so we now have a a rocket facility in Wool. Was it Woolgast? Yeah, Woolgast. There we go. Rocket site. So when that finishes building um, under secret, which is where we do nuclear weapons and rockets, at a, at some point down this rocket tree, we can't progress further unless we have a rocket test facility. So now we have one. Uh, you can see it's still under construction. I mean, we built it, but it's being assembled, so it's not actually providing the bonus until this switches from um, beige, brown, to green. If 
Okay, we're good on that. Let's make sure we're not missing anything on aviation. Five hundred kilogram bombs and uh, armored fighting vehicle tracks and suspension. Uh, this is a pretty important technology because it's uh, up the chain of, of of technology that we need to unlock other things. So I think we're required to have that um, at least at two, which we now do, uh, in order to unlock medium armor designs. We're, we're still missing some other prerequisites. I believe they're in here. So actually, we unlocked welded plate armor construction and armor plate thickness, and we want those to be researched as soon as possible. So I'm going to bump down to the bottom of our research tree, and actually we can see that we're able to research them right off the bat because we have 55 projects available. Incendiary bomb. Okay, so we got some inefficient research, and then we can actually queue more research now because we have less projects than we're able to take on. So. Let's just move through and make sure we're not missing any 1936 technology that we might need. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do nav because we're, we're not going to focus on naval bombing, but we want our medium bombers to um, be able to conduct efficient naval strikes, especially in the Mediterranean. So those will be helpful later. Medium bombers are nice because they're... Um, they're uh, Jack of all trades, master of none, whereas we could produce naval bombers. I mean, obviously that's a pretty old design, but we could produce naval bombers that would be much more effective at sea attack, and you can see the difference in values right there. Uh, but they're much, much, much less able to do um, effective ground attack. And I'd rather have these values, soft attack, hard attack, sea attack, than have these values. We don't have the IC that the US does where we can afford to produce multiple different kinds of bombers. Okay, our first fighter is coming off the production line pretty soon. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll combine this with our other fighters that we've already already got here to create our first fighter group. Uh, again, more bonuses from Willie Messerschmitt. That guy's great. Heat wave of 36. This is like a, a historical event. Um, oh dear. So we're going to get some... Well, actually, Europe doesn't. It's a North American thing. Yeah, it says that right here. So Canada, the U.S., and Mexico get some some issues resulting from that. Still low popularity. That's okay. You can see our supplies have recovered. Yeah, so we don't want to worry too much about this value um, on, a, on a daily or even really monthly level. Um, we will need to track it more closely when we have like 3 million men in the Soviet Union. Um, at that point, it is something we need to pay attention to, but right now it's not. All right, so um, our first fighter group is produced. Um, let's put it in Dortmund. So you'll see when you get a unit to that's done with production, you'll get a little thing here that says available units. All you got to do is click in that, select it from the list, and then spawn it in one of your control territories. So that the one of the things about that though is the territory has to be contiguous. So I could spawn it in contiguous Germany, but if I had a colony in Namibia with no factories, I couldn't produce it down here. So you'd have to move it after construction. That's just something to remember. Um, all right, so let's get some fighters pulled out of our our. And we can see that we have two groups, so let's go ahead and click the Merge Selected Units button. We're going to rename these guys to JG1. 
and then we're going to select the, the general. So this is something that I'm going to show you guys for ground units too. So we have our, our JG-1 now that's composed of three fighter groups, or four fighter groups and zero bombers. And then we need to assign a general. So right now it auto-selected Graf, who's got the following bonuses and a leader skill of five. Um, I am fine with any general that has this superior air tactician bonus. So I'll go with uh, Von Green. And then I'm going to, because I'm an OCD perfectionist, I'm going to just rename these fighter groups. We can see that these uh, ones that we started with are an older technology, they'll start upgrading right away. Cool. And uh, since we pulled them out of that original stack, um, they're now able to receive upgrades. And I will start the clock again, and you'll see what I mean by that. So you can see the single engine fighter prototype level is increasing every every day. It's now 6%. And we're also getting that contro controllable propeller pitch that we researched. So we're not at war, um, but I can issue Circular area, we can see the max mission range for these fighters. It's pretty low because they're they're pretty old designs. And I'll go um, 150 kilometers. So basically, what these guys will be doing is, if anybody violates our airspace, is they'll intercept them. And uh, we want them to do it continuously. And we're not going to limit the mission duration. Uh, we're okay with them doing it both in day and in night. And they're going to be doing it. Um, aggressively. When we set up our um, air units for Lake Barbarossa, I'll go into much more detail with this. So you can see they're now air intercepting, um, but otherwise if they're not doing an active intercept they'll be at base. Uh, one other thing, so we need to assign order of battle. That's uh, the final thing I'll, I'll cover in this video and I'll do the same thing for the infantry divisions. So right now they're just attached to our um, Wehrmacht High Command and that's not very efficient. So. I want this fighter group under Von Grime to report directly to Lufkreis KDO-4, which is like our, our fourth flying region in Dortmund, and they're in the same province. So we can see now, if I open up the Order of Battle button, which is this little guy here, and I go, let me collapse Hitler, um, we can see undergoing the following regions with the generals in charge of them. And then if I go to Region 4 and expand it, I can see that he's under he's in charge of two flak regiments and JG-1. So you can use this screen to uh, check your order of battle. Uh, the other way you can see it um, is with these lines. So So real quick, before our first division comes out of production, um, we just got some industry, that's nice, some marine hull, I'll go into that in a minute. Uh, let's just check our infantry practical right now, which is 11.1. .1. When these come out of, of production, um, we'll get increased practical, and that'll mean that the next order of infantry that we put in will, will produce just a little bit faster. Okay, so th uh, 37th division just came out, and we can check that we're now at 11.8. So there's your increased practical. OK, uh, we have units available to be deployed. Uh, I wanted to go into more detail now that we have a, a actual ground division. So I want to cover the Rhine border with France. So we're going to put this division in Laroche. And I'm going to re-list them as the first division. And I want to go in, and there's this auto-assign button. 
I don't want the AI doing that for me. Uh, Guderian's, uh, he's got more important things to do than control an individual infantry division. So I'm going to give this division to, honestly, any general that's a three grade. Um, defense or offense is fine. I'll go with Scruff. Okay, so there's our first division. And uh, we now need to assign this division to our order of battle. So. What we'll do is we'll click this Create New Core button, and that automatically attaches that division to this core. I can click on the core, which has no commander currently, and I'm going to rename it to First Army Corps. Uh, I like using Roman numerals, and I'm going to put in a core commander. Let's go with uh, Franz Halder. And the core command can go to Stuttgart, and I'm going to strategically redeploy them there. Let's give them a chance to get to Stuttgart. Okay, but this core is still not attached to anything. We need to create an army. Uh, hold on, let me just relabel this. Let's create an army. Uh, this will be the first army. I think order of battle is like one of the more fun things about Hearts of Iron 3 specifically, so I'm going to nerd out on this a little bit, and you'll have to just bear with me. If it's boring, then, then by all means fast forward. So uh, first army, we want to do a, a rank 4 general. So I'm going to go with we'll go with uh, Von Reichenau. And then we need to create an army group, so let's go with army group. We're going to call this Army Group West. And we want a, a rank 5 general in charge of an army group. So I'm going to put, um, let's see. Von Rundstedt. One of the nice things about army groups is um, the benefits of this general trickle down to the entire army group. So Rundstedt has a logistics master bonus so that it reduces the supply consumption of all units, divisions, and corps under his command by 10, which is, uh, you, you can imagine, scales very, very well. So uh, AG West can be based out of Frankfurt, and they're going to be subordinated to uh, army high command, basically. So let's start time here again. Okay, some technologies came out, body armor, camouflage, trade stuff, long range submarine class, that's pretty important. But before we get into that, we can see now that we have an order of battle for the army. Right now it's pretty limited, right? There's just one division. Um, but you can see the, uh, the hierarchy right there. I'm going to actually put these guys with the um, Baltic Fleet. And we can see from the Army High Command uh, tab that there's only 12,000 men in the Army right now. Uh, it's for the whole Army. Uh, you know, the West Group has 12,000 men because there's only one division, right? And then First Army has 12,000 men. So let's start spawning more divisions because they just came out of production. I'll fast forward a little bit through this and spare you guys the commentary. So there's our first core. And then we click on individual divisions to assign them to cores. They're all going to be part of first core in Stuttgart. And then I can click on the core, and now I can see five divisions, and then I can click on this little five divisions button, and now I'm controlling all five divisions. And I can modify their generals from this tab, and I'll just give them a bunch of um, three-tier generals. These are not the historical commanders. It would you know, be a lot of work to research that, and it's not a historical playthrough anyway. So uh, First Army now has 60,000 men. You can see that. 
Okay, and then I want my other core up here in the in the SAR region. I can't move them into the demilitarized zone yet, but I will shortly. I'll just spawn this whole second core um, all in the same spot. Okay, there's second core. They're also going to be part of first army. And we can see for divisions that have just been spawned, um, if I click on first infantry division, you can see that their organization is only about half. And this will increase a little bit as they sit in place and receive supplies. Um, but because they were spawned as reserve divisions, um, you can see that they're maximum organization and strength is reduced by 5%. So that'll increase to 100% when um, we change our mobilization law. So First Army now has 120,000 men. So you can see basically we're at the troop level of the Weimar Republic before the Nazis took over. And because we finished all those infantry divisions, we now have um, a lot of freed up industrial capacity. So we'll just put in another order for 10 more infantry divisions and we got our practical builds for fighters bombers and submarines still going let's check research uh, we got a bunch of inefficiencies here so let's just go through and, and fix those um, we're halfway through 1936 so I actually in this case I will start submarine class 1937 along with submarine armament uh, deep battle political doctrine Okay, we got that to 39. I'll throw in. Uh, we're not going to be using CAV too much, but we do have a bunch of recon CAV in our infantry divisions, so let's just go ahead and get that at least above 1914. Construction, we got industry to 1938. And then two infantry things we can pause. So cam camouflage designs were at 1941, and security units were at 1940. So we can see we have available research. We can um, do five or three additional research projects. So let's go through and see if there's anything in 1937 maybe we can start. Um, I'll do heavy armor forging and road and rail network. And I'll start artillery, uh, range finding, barrel, and carriage designs. So those will be a little bit inefficient, um, but they are very impactful, so we'll get, at least get a little bit of an early start. Okay, General Weber is killed. So this is our, our Luftwaffe advocate for strategic bombers, and he, he did historically die in 1936. So we can choose to continue his projects, which will make it a little bit easier to start four-engine bombers later. Or we can choose to focus on um, twin Stuka-type bombers, and it'll we'll get a bonus to those practicals, but we'll have issues catching up with the U.S. and other countries in strategic bombers. Um, I don't think, again, I don't think we have the IC to build a bunch of strategic bombers, so I'm going to make the historical decision and go with tactical. Okay, we got a uh, heavy industry uh, option, so we can add one heavy industry in Hanover. I'm definitely going to do that. We finished high density alloys, so that gives us, uh, that basically unlocks the uh, anti tank ammunition tree. Let's go ahead and um, get started on basic anti tank ammunition, which is 1936 technology. We'll move that to the top. And you can see it's this basic AP shell made of steel alloy, and there's a historical photo of one. And that gives some pretty big piercing bonuses to the following regiments. Superior strength, uh, educational advancement is important. Let's just 
go up and go to national and I'll turn that off. We're now at 1939 and I'll get started on advanced education. So this is like colleges and universities and this is like high schools. So um, let's move that up to the top too. That has a big impact on things. And uh, let's, let's finish up this video. I'm going to issue orders to Second Corps to um, advance up to the border with the with the SAR land, but they're not going to actually enter it quite yet. And then let's get some generals in these in these command slots. We also need to assign a, a core commander. Uh, Corps commanders are one of the most important general uh, positions in the game because, uh, like I said, for theater commands, corps commanders affect the bonuses for all of these divisions underneath them, especially in a logistics uh, context. So um, when we're really into the Soviet Union, um, these generals that have logistics wizard bonuses, are they become the most important generals in the game for Germany. So we got to use those sparingly. Uh, we'll go with... This guy. There we go. Okay, so I'll go down to 4x speed, and we can see Second Corps is going to cross the Rhine River and enter the uh, at least the part of the star that we can still that we can still access. Okay, so yeah, they're moving. You can see they're moving at five kilometers an hour, and um, the terrain bonus is is not an issue, um, but you can see that it's causing a little bit of of a slowdown crossing the river, um, which makes sense. That has a big impact on combat, as you can imagine. Okay. Uh, Division will end up in uh, Saint Vendel, and then uh, then it will be done. Oh yeah, uh, one last thing. So we we now have the option to um, to buy strategic resources. So our biggest um, production slowdown right now, because we're going to be building a lot of um, anti-tank guns and, and tanks, is going to be nickel. Um, so we need to buy nickel, and that'll give us some options about who we can actually buy it from. I think I have to let a day pass for that to, to trigger. Uh, radios and small engine warship. We'll move 2nd Corps headquarters to mains. Uh, it might take more than a day for this to show up. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and um, as usual, if you think this has been an enjoyable video uh, for your Hearts of Iron,